it's not unusual for us to go to like 20 or 22 drafts and uh, early on those would be big big changes and then by the end those draft numbers might be a bit uh, boastful in calling them a whole nother draft when you just change a little bit of dialogue here and there but we do we do a lot a lot of rewriting is what it's all about for us really yeah i mean often a episode is, is as good as the stuff you've chucked out basically we, we try and be quite brutal with our material and sort of believe there's always more good stuff around the corner. You have to pretend that you're writing the final script every time and it's a sort of mental game you play with yourself. You can't think, all of this will end up <laughs> being binned, that I'm now spending hours writing. You just can't do that. It's very, it's, it's a kind of game you play, yeah. And sometimes it stays, you know, or, you know, and then there will be stuff from the first draft, or sometimes a whole scene which just stays. So, you know, you have to keep on believing. <laughs> you have to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. You know, Matthew Graham wrote the first episode of Life on Mars. Um, you know, 30 drafts. It's unbelievable, you know, and I'll do... Um, I you know I'll do 10 or 12 drafts of a, an episode of Hustle. I'll, you know, it's kind of you just have to keep writing, keep rewriting, keep rewriting, keep rewriting, um, because you're honing it all the time. You're making it sharper, crisper, smarter. How much do you actually enjoy the process of writing itself? Sometimes you sit down and there's a scene and you feel excited to write it, but it's. I feel like it should be more fun than it is. You know, the more fun the writing process is, probably the less good the show will be. And the more hard work the writing process is, the more funny the show will be. God, how depressing. What a disappointment you two are. <laughs> it's depressing. It's yeah, depressing. The secret, we've discovered the secret of comedy, which is lots of work, <laughs> endless work. I've read your, your book, which is chronicling like kind of a year in the life of Doctor Who and your, your yeah. work on it. And you spend a lot of time quite being quite miserable. Yeah, it is. Yes, I do. And... Which isn't, I only realised that when that book was finished, actually. It's, 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 it was interesting for me to see in print. It's like therapy, actually, but it hasn't helped. <laughs> maybe therapy never does. But um, it's, maybe it's a system I'm stuck in, and it's not how everyone should write. It's not how to write, it's just how I write. And I am stuck in that system of it having to be punishing. Why is that? Why? And you smoke too much, you drink too much coffee, and, and you stay, and yeah, you're sort of addicted to that. It's a sort of addiction. It's like homework for me, and I have to be... I'm due in a script now that I should have started weeks ago, and, and it's just... I just... And I keep putting it off and putting it off. If I could leave here and go and start that script, my whole Christmas would be lovely and everything would be marvellous and fine, and I won't. I know I just can't because I don't... It's like, it's like it has to be punishing in some way, and I don't know why that is, because I love it at the same time, but... But, but I love it afterwards, I love it when it's finished, and I love it when it's made, and then I'm really proud, even though you're critical of it, you know, I'm really, really happy with it, but I hate writing at the same time, I absolutely hate it. I love having written, I hate fucking writing, I hate the process, but I love having done it, and I love, a kind of love-hate thing going on there. Up until quite recently, up until about maybe an hour ago when I met you, I used to think the people in telly had a secret. I thought they all knew something, all right? <laughs> all right, I thanks. Thought, <laughs> I thought they all had this little thing. So w I remember when I first went into EastEnders and I was kind of, I was sitting there and they, I, I had no frames of reference because they would talk about Brecht and Shakespeare and, and stuff that I didn't know what they were talking about. Um, and so I thought, well, they all know something. And sooner or later, someone's going to send me on the course that I need. Um, and of course, that never happened. One common thread that seems to connect all the writers we've spoken to so far is that at various points they felt like they were a fraud or like they were about to be found oh, out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, have yeah. you ever... Oh, always, and now, exactly. But everyone feels like that. That's no secret. It's like if you work in the bacon counter in Tesco's, you think, oh, they're better than me at cheese. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's, that's just life. What would your advice be for anyone who's hoping to get into writing? The writer writes. That's it. A writer writes. That's what you do. The clue's in the title. Yeah, writer. Fucking write. I think one thing that really helped us was, you know, doing a lot of kind of not very glamorous work, like Jesse mentioned before, writing lots of kids' sitcoms, learning the trade, basically, because being in production and near production is this different experience, sitting at home and pretending you're making a show, actually making one, you get to see what it needs to be done, and it really helps. If you get stuck, I think the best thing to do is pretend to put it away 
as if you, you, you're going to put the key, give the key to somebody else for a week, and you, you'll, you'll work it out really fast. You have to be, beat yourself up a bit to get your best work out, and that's when you'll feel really proud. If you want to write something, don't sit down in front of a blank screen. Just, just if you want to write something, to have a vague think about what you want to write about, start taking notes, get, get somewhere like either a notebook or a thing online or a thing in your computer where you're collecting every thought you have about the show. And don't write it for ages. Uh, writing is kind of like, it's kind of like having a poo, basically. It's really hard if you don't want to go, but, but, but there's a time when you, when you have to go. And, and, and that's what it should be like. It will be a time when you've put so much stuff in your subconscious that you're just so excited about writing it that you have to sit down and get going. And that, that, that's really the secret. That's why people falter, because they start writing too soon. They don't know where to go. They sit down. They don't know what the characters sound like. They don't know what the world feels like. They don't know what the tone should be. They haven't put enough thought into these things. Best quote I ever heard, uh, William Goldman's a in the screen trade, and he said, writing is easy. All you need to do is to stare at a blank sheet of paper until your forehead bleeds. I think the only bit of advice you'd ever, I'd ever say to someone is finish it. It's like, it doesn't exist. It's not a script until it's finished. You're not a writer, actually. Let's be blunt. You're not until you've written. And you can be. Anyone can be. But if it's all in your head, then no, you're not a writer. And if, it, and if it's only two pages, shut up. Stop wasting time. Finish it. Because no one is going to thank you for those two pages. No one's going to be impressed by those two pages. No one's going to buy those two pages. No one's going to love those two pages. It's just a waste of time. You're not a writer until you've got a script or a novel or whatever it is you want to do. Then you can start the hard work. But up until then, it's just bullshit. So get on with it.